So we're back with another episode of the Eye Photography Podcast. It's Stephen and there's Emily. Whoop, 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 that's me. That's it, raising the house. <laughs> a little bit of early 2000s dance music and dance <laughs> One day I'll do a sensible intro, but today is not that day. I think it's just got to the point now that, yeah, we've just kind of given up kind of on formalities. <laughs> Hopefully people know us by now and you've been listening to these podcasts for a little while, be familiar with our, <laughs> our personalities and our wee little quirks. But um, what are we talking about today, Em? We're talking about photography software and all of the cool things that come with it. That's Woo-hoo! it. And that that was a song we spent a long time trying to create there, wasn't it? We yep. worked out the lyrics, the harmony and <laughs> and everything yeah. but Emily's right we are because there, there is so many as you know as every month goes by it feels like there's a brand new piece of editing software that comes out or there's an update to one that's already existing so it's it can be so confusing as to for a new photographer coming in you know for choosing a camera can be hard enough but then you know deciding on you know what type of software or what app to edit on you're thinking well what do they all do do they all do the same what are the differences what are the benefits or the pros and cons and that's kind of where we wanted to go through in this uh this podcast really is to talk about some of the more popular pieces of software we may talk about one or two apps as well um and kind of give you our impression from uh our background as photographers who've used most of them maybe not all of them but we'll leave kind of give you a few little uh tips based upon the marketing information of other ones that we've not used ourselves and hopefully be able to give you some insights but on the whole um we we're, we're quite familiar with a lot of these aren't we emily yeah it's our bread and butter isn't it editing 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 that's it and and that's it there's there's pros and cons and people will find some easier than others as much as you may find a lot of them do similar things um layouts uh user interfaces as they call them these days um things like that are so important to be able to get to grips um because you know we may talk things about like photoshop um it may do most of the tools and have most of the tools that lightroom has but how it's all laid out is so critical because it's the same on cameras isn't it about being able to understand where your buttons are and be able to access things quickly yeah and and comparing photoshop to lightroom lightroom will do things much quicker in my experience than photoshop because it's always about three menus deep in photoshop (laughs) well i think i think that's probably where it spirals from i mean photoshop is the first one i was going to talk about because i find it's like the it's the mother of a lot of other um softwares not that they're all necessarily connected through adobe but they they run off the back of it that photoshop started the the editing software kind of um industry somewhat um and then all these others that have come out since um basically kind of do what a lot of like um, photoshop does but does it better or makes it look better or it's easier i think it becomes like the the uh the apple mentality that steve jobs was always a big believer that he wanted to get people to uh, when it came to like the iPod the whole concept was it uh, behind it was that you wanted to get to your favorite songs within three clicks and it, it's totally what you've just said about Lightroom is that it may do similar things to Photoshop but it does it quicker and for photographers who are busy just people who are busy anyway who are photo editing you want to be in and out of editing quickly don't you yeah some people love it I could sit there and do it all day, but I think other people, it's sort of just one aspect of photography. They may enjoy being out and about with the camera a lot more and probably mm. rightfully so. And another thing to bring up with, with the alternatives to your Adobe software is uh, Adobe's monthly payments, isn't it? And not everybody mm-hmm. wants to pay monthly. I still rage at that because I've had <laughs> I've had the Adobe stuff for blooming years, decades, and it always used to be you could buy one and it would last you about five years and then you buy a new one and then now it's monthly and I am a cheapskate at heart. And <laughs> <laughs> if I can find an alternative that you just buy once and then you've got it, I'm all yeah. for that. And I think a lot of people are too. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's why we're probably talking about more than just Photoshop and Lightroom these days because of that that kind of payment subscription plan. Can you hear that an alarm? No, it's okay. That's all right. Sorry. So I think that's probably why we're talking about um, uh, software that's not just Photoshop and Lightroom because people have probably got a little bit jaded. I mean, I'll admit I've got a subscription for it, but that's through work, so I don't necessarily pay for it. But that's for the purposes of education and teaching. Um, So obviously I get the benefits of being able to use it as well personally. But with that said, there is a couple of pieces of software we're going to talk about further on um, that are one-offs and some that are free um, that I've used as well. 
which I think do a cracking job. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we've kind of already started to touch on uh, Photoshop with Adobe, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things that puts people off is the subscription panel. Um, but also I find a lot of people just get totally overwhelmed by how it looks, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. I think if you'd never touched a piece of uh, photo editing software in your life, I probably wouldn't recommend starting with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably recommend uh, Lightroom or Luminar. It's much more user friendly. Photoshop has its place, but it, it used to be the be all and end all. And now it's something that for my workflow, I dip in and out of. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be the end of the world if I didn't use it. Um, for my workflow, 98% is in Lightroom or Luminar, and then I would use Photoshop uh, correctively. So if I wanted to get rid of blemishes or there was a cone, a traffic cone in the background that I wanted to remove a little bit more neatly, yeah, all of those in-depth, intricate things, Photoshop does very, very well. But you can even do bits and bobs of that in Lightroom. So yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Photoshop, Stephen? I kind of, I was going to say, I grew up with it. <laughs> it wasn't as if, like, you know, I was a baby and <laughs> Photoshop would be there for me. Um, but no, in professional career, um, when I started working in the studios, Lightroom didn't exist. In fact, it was pretty much just Photoshop. You may have had uh, Microsoft Paint be around at that time, but I think that's starting to reveal age too much, so I'll, I'll swiftly move away. Um, but at the studio that I, I worked at, Photoshop was the be-all and end-all. It was the only thing that they used. Um, I don't even know if we actually came on to use Lightroom towards the, the, the later years. I know we used Bridge really as a, as a kind of library viewer. Um, but because that was what I was trained on and day in, day out for well, 11, 12 years I was using it, that's what I know pretty well. Um, so I will kind of say from experience, you're totally right. It's, it's a bamboozling place to potentially walk into. I don't find it so much bamboozling because I, you know, I've, I've learned it every day, but as with anything, you need time and years put in, but not everybody's got that time and, you know, to, you know, to put into things like that. So it, it can be a very, very powerful tool. I think it can do most of what everything else does, maybe doesn't do it as well. I, uh, I did grow up also with Photoshop. I used to use micro graphics, I think, before Photoshop. I was into photo editing before I ever picked up a camera I used to make like fan art and try and make my own posters and oh, cool. yeah I, was, I didn't have much in my life as well. <laughs> but I totally agree with what you're saying if you've grown up with it and you were willing to put in the time and the effort to learn all of all of what Photoshop has to offer it's the most powerful tool on the planet for photo editing if you just want to take a lovely landscape and boost the sky and and tidy it up and you know, remove the people in the foreground or whatever, like more more everyday editing, it's probably a little bit over the top mm. to what most people would need. And then I would gear you towards like yeah. Luminar and, and other things. Yeah, I, I think I think if anything, Adobe have recognized that Photoshop is such a beast that it sometimes puts people off um, because uh, they've started to bring in features that are um, that have maybe kind of come up since things like Luminar when they started to do the sky replacement and you know the the rave reviews that got what two months maybe a month later Photoshop came out with a neural filter of um, sky replacement and some other bits and pieces so you can see that they react to these situations and they can see maybe I'll say the market's shifting away from them but certainly there are things that they're not doing that they had a great piece of software for years and then didn't really push it forwards that much and that maybe that's why they start to maybe lose a little bit of the market but with all that said it is still a magical wonderful powerful tool and because of that um, at iPhotography, I actually sat down for a couple of weeks and basically planned out this kind of bonus module for anybody that's on any of our iPhotography courses to teach them um, what Photoshop is, how it works. And I've literally gone through as many of the panels, layers, buttons, menus that are relevant for a photographer to show you what this does, what that does, how this works. So it's not so much a tutorial of editing a picture, but what all the little combinations of tools do. So if you don't want to be overwhelmed by this and you actually want to challenge yourself and get to grips with it if you're an iPhotography member we've got a bonus module um, that takes you through I think it's about five hours long it may seem big but you can pick and choose what you want to learn um, and you can actually start to understand it better and then you can go on to actually photo editing uh, even further um, and create some magical wonderful kind of uh, creations that, that that are just absolutely out there because I think it does have the power for that but initially yeah on first 
you know, introduction to it, you're just like, wow, where do I even open a picture to begin with? It can, it can feel a little bit bamboozling. But the next one I wanted to talk about, um, I'm going to leave this to you, Em, because you are Lightroom ambassador. You know, I will call you CEO of the Lightroom. Um, <laughs> but I, I, th- I think it's something that you know very, very well. And so I think you'd be able to kind of explore uh, and exploit the benefits of, of why Lightroom is so good for photographers. Yeah, so if, if you want to get into photo editing if you don't mind paying the monthly subscription which i think i think you can get like photoshop and lightroom for like a tenner or something it's yeah. it's very very good value mm-hmm. um what lightroom does is from your import to your organization to your uh, developing so it's like lightroom is like a digital dark room Ooh, i, I love that <laughs> uh, and then you can export it and, and and from start to finish if you were only to use one piece of software for your whole editing workflow something like lightroom really does tick all the boxes mm-hmm. you can um add your own presets you can change all your exposures your contrasts white balance even do a little bit of like corrective editing, like removing blemishes and stuff. It's not, ne- it's, what would you, well, how would you compare like that sort of feature to Photoshop? I would say Photoshop is a bit more intricate and will do it better, but you can get away with it in Lightroom. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like the problem with Photoshop is that it was, it wasn't designed for photographers. It was designed for anybody creative at that point. So you've, you've got a million different tools for a million different types of people. Whereas as you said, Lightroom is just dedicated for photographers. Um, so, so sorry, remind me the, the tool that you were just talking about. So in Lightroom, if I had a spot and wanted to remove it, I could do it very easily. But yeah. if it was something like, um, like a cone in the background or something that was a little bit more tricky in the background photoshop yeah. is much better at removing items that you can do you can use things like the patch tool um so they're very similar to your like healing tools but patch tools will uh replace areas but still use the texture uh whereas some healing tools they basically just take color values and they just replace it so you you kind of get to disguise what you're hiding but it doesn't transfer the texture um but um content aware i think is probably the closest um tool that is it's an it's an ai kind of boosted feature within photoshop that kind of reads the area that you've selected and goes right okay so you want to get rid of that and it samples the rest of the image and thinks right what kind of color values and tones and details are similar and then basically kind of make some sort of composite over that so i think that, that's got a heck of a lot better these days and even um, I think there's other softwares that that will do similar things where you can now even just like press a button to say select object and it, they're getting so good and scarily good in a way that everything's becoming like a one touch solution. Like you press that button, it selected that, right? You can remove the background there, um, which I, I, I don't know. I kind of, I quite enjoyed spending all that time cutting out an object and I know it's really kind of laborious and we've, it's completely- I was going to com- say the same thing. <laughs> It's completely counteractive, I, isn't it, of, of like what we've been saying. <laughs> back in my day, I needed a graphics tablet and I was zoomed in a thousand percent going over every single strand of her. That's it. Well, you, you feel, I, I feel so much part of the project then because I know I've had to kind of, you know, sweat blood and tears, kind of cutting that out, making sure those pixels aren't coloured. Whereas now, if you rock up to photo editing, um, you just press a button and it's done. You think, I've just wasted so many years of my life. If I was born 15 years later, I, I could do the exact same things, you know, in such less time. But that's just time and technology and advancements, really. So I can't get kind of too lost about it. The one thing I wanted to ask, or I think we should kind of make clear, is that over the years, well, maybe over the past few years, um, Lightroom's developed, um, and I, I think it's Photoshop as well, to have um, multi-platforms that are, you know, also appear on your phone and also your tablets. And I think that's where Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC have started to kind of come up and divide. But just for people that aren't aware of the differences, et cetera, can you kind of explain what the difference between Classic and CC is? So cl- Classic is where... They're very, very similar. And I think the the two different ways that Adobe have gone around this is really annoying and really confusing because <laughs> people might, they've almost got identical icons as well. So if you download yeah. one thing against the other and then you open it up and the interface looks completely different, you're like, what's going on? It's tripped many a photographer up. But your classic is a companion and, and where you can use it on phone, on iPad and on your desktop. 
you have what are called smart previews. Uh, so when you import your images onto desktop, you can make tiny little versions of the files and then that goes up into your Adobe Cloud. And then you can continue editing them on iPad. You can continue editing them on your mobile phone and it all syncs. It's the uh -huh. coolest thing ever. Back when, you know, traveling was a thing I, I was <laughs> i was often editing weddings on my ipad on planes and things and it was so cool um so if if you are into the adobe ecosystem if you have an ipad or an iphone i think it's available on android as well yeah. you can do a heck of a lot on the go yeah um also if you don't want to bother syncing it to your desktop you can buy these little adapters um just a, a lightning to sd adapter or USB to SD adapter and, and copy your raw files directly onto your iPad when you're out on holiday, edit in the evening with a beverage, watching the sunset. Yeah, all we know, those we know, we know what you do. We know what those you do. Are the days. <laughs> That's how you spend your holidays, isn't it? You don't relax and, and, and sightsee. You're like, right, take the photographs, yeah. edit them. <laughs> edit them. Yeah. And if you use your iPad Pro, you've got your Apple Pencil that you can edit with as well. Uh, Lightroom on your tablets is just revolutionary it's so good i was expecting it to be fully pants to be honest because you just think how can you get all those features on a tablet that's yeah. not going to work but it works seamlessly i've edited literally full weddings full oh, wow. paid for projects on my ipad entirely it's so good yeah I, I i will kind of um join in with that that camp as well because i edit on a samsung tablet um with the the lightroom app and and i found it so much easier because i i know lightroom and i know what the sliders do layouts maybe a little bit different but not massively so but it's enough that you can still follow it um but it makes it so much easier that i don't have to go upstairs turn the computer on wait for that to load up i've literally got it as you say anywhere i can be indoors can be outdoors it, it makes it and I imagine if you are a photographer on the go if you're traveling a lot you know when traveling returns and outdoors <laughs> returns um then yeah it, it, it would absolutely make your job so much easier so yeah if you can get around ultimately the subscription model um you know and things like that you know don't necessarily bother you I you can actually get Photoshop and Lightroom in a package together I think they call it the photographer's package don't they so yeah. you, you get both in there and you, you can sync images from one to another so um so that's Adobe so we've done that to death um let's move on to another one that I think you will know inside out as well yeah <clears throat> Pardon me. So this is about Luminar, or specifically Luminar 4, but I think there is like a newer, I don't know if it's an update to Luminar 4, is Luminar AI? What is it? I believe it? it's its own entity, and I believe they are developing them both as two separate pieces of software, but I do think there's a lot of overlap. Oh, um, right. Luminar in general, from 1 to 4 to AI, is essentially uh, a Lightroom replacement with extra bells and whistles. So you've got all of your typical presets, uh, you can edit your photograph with your sliders and your white balance, etc. But then you also have really cool intelligent features like sky replacement, where if you go out on a cloudy day and you take a gorgeous photograph, but the light just didn't hit the way you wanted, you can just push a button and ta-da, there's a beautiful sunset replaced. <laughs> and you have to do literally no editing at all as Stephen said a lot of this now is like a one-click solution it's really really clever um and Luminar is a one-off payment sort of solution as well so if, if your subscription based uh Adobe stuff doesn't quite sit right with you Luminar yeah. is a very very good alternative I've even yeah. made my dad buy it and my dad's <laughs> like the most like he's a really really good landscape photographer but he faffs about it. he doesn't like the editing part very much yeah so I got him the Luminar uh, and he's really taken to it and, and he's, he's got his images are looking really, really polished and lovely. And he, he's, he's, he's very, very proficient on it. I'm so proud. It brings a tear oh, to my yes. eyes. <laughs> and this is why Emily is so good on Lightroom. She's such a good teacher for, for her dad and for others, because we've got a Lightroom course. Um, sorry, Lightroom course, a Luminar course, a Luminar 4 course that Emily has produced uh, for eye photography. So if you wanted to check that out, um, again, I'm sure I'll put all the, the links in the description. But um. Can you open raw files in, in Luminar? Because I know obviously a lot of photographers will shoot raw as well. So it handles it quite nicely, doesn't yes. it? Yes. And, and from, from Luminar 4 and above, it actually has its own library feature, which is very similar to your Lightroom library. So you can call in Luminar. You can see all your previous projects in Luminar. 
it's very, very similar to yeah. uh, the Lightroom workflow. Is there anything that is missed or you think, you know, oh, Lightroom's maybe got the edge here or are they, are they that similar, do you feel? They are very, very similar. There's a few things I think Adobe has the edge on. One, the, the big one for me is if you've got Lightroom open and you want to start tinkering in Photoshop, you can send the raw file to Photoshop. It'll open in Photoshop. You can do your editing and then you can send it back to Lightroom. It is so cool. With Luminar, I guess you'd have to export it, open Photoshop, and you could still do it, but it isn't as seamless. Like the Adobe stuff works really well together. Yeah. The, yeah. the other thing that Lightroom, I think, has the edge on is um, the noise reduction, because uh, that's all very much algorithm based. And I think Adobe's been doing it for years and years and years. So if you want to clear up your noisy images, I do think the Lightroom uh, sliders do a little bit of a better job. But for all intents and purposes, it's very, very similar. It's even designed to look very, very similar. <laughs> Not like they're trying to rip them off or anything. No. But, <laughs> but they've obviously got a good thing going as Lightroom. And so they, you know, like I said that a lot of these new kind of standalone pieces of software, they, they're built off the back of, of what Adobe has had great success with, but made little refinements, as you say, like Sky Replacement and even the AI tool. Um, I've seen um, amazing kind of uh, trailer videos about what that can do. Um, so it's it's really trying to help people kind of do some really brilliant edits that are a lot more automated, but it means they don't have to spend that longer time, you know, actually doing it. And sometimes you feel a little bit more justified by paying, you know, 50, 100 pounds for the software to begin with, because you know, you've got it for life then. Whereas, you know, if you were doing such one click solutions with Adobe and Light, uh, Photoshop and Lightroom and paying 10 pounds a month, you think, well, am I getting the value here? You know, I'm having to pay a lot more for, for a very little amount of time actually in these editing suites. So I, I can see the benefits from, from that side, but um, we've got the next one we wanted to talk about was something that has no money involved at all, which is lovely. Mm. This is I love um, a, freebie. a freebie indeed. Uh, this is Pixlr. And we're, we're big, big lovers of Pixlr eye photography because um, we've used Pixlr for such a long time. Um, and it's a great photo editor and it, is, it has improved so much over the past number of years. So it's not just a case it was a standalone piece of software because um, it's not technically a piece of software on your desktop. It is an online editor. So you don't even have to download it. It's not going to take up any hard drive space. Um, but yeah, everything is kind of uploaded online and then you can edit your images as happily as you want. Um, Pixlr has two versions. Pixlr X uh, and Pixlr E, both are free, but there are also pro versions. Now with those pro versions, again, they're not massively expensive. Um, um, I think maybe around about kind of four pounds, five dollars, something like that per month. It maybe works out if you pay um, over the year. Um, but it basically gives you access to all the tools of the software anyway, but then a lots of uh, resources and, and kind of um, what do they refer to them, I suppose? Yeah, just like resources that you can download, texture files, uh, stock files, effects, et cetera, as well, that you can kind of load on top. So there's little like packs that you can download if you're a pro member. But have you ever used Pixel before, Emily? I have a little tinkle and it's pretty good. And one thing I wanted to say about it being web-based is uh, your Adobe's and your Luminar's are on your hard drive using your processing power. So if you have an older machine or a, a more entry level computer, you might find that your editing is a little bit slower because it is quite processor heavy. Mm -hmm. If you're using a web based editor like Pixlr, it's all on the servers. So it doesn't matter what your machine is doing. They take all the processing power for you. So it might be a great option if you have a more entry level uh, computer. Yeah, I, I think there is an app for Pixlr. I've not used it, but I'm sure I've seen it on their website, but I, I'm not going to kind of start reviewing it because I've never uh, used it to compare anyway. I can only talk about the desktop version. Um, but again, with that said, if you're an iPhotography member, always give the opportunity to show the benefits of what we do at iPhotography. Um, I sat down and again, like we did with Photoshop, we did a start to finish. This is what this button does, X, Y, and Z across the entirety of Pixlr. So if you've never used it before, and if you want to, if you want to keep costs low, like Emily said, if you've maybe got not the world's fastest computer or device and you want to do some online editing instead, we've literally got all the answers you need. So if you bought one of our courses, if you bought Emily's uh, Lightroom course, or Luminar course, you'll get um, access to the Pixlr one as well for free. So it, it's a nice little kind of benefit on top because it, it has a lot of adjustment tools. It's maybe not in depth in terms of 
a lot of the stuff things like uh, photoshop does and i don't think there's anything in the way of like sky replacements like luminar but um some of the features in there are kind of quite cute um they've got the opportunity where you can kind of create collages and, and kind of uh, mixes of images so if you want to kind of put little groups together you can do and you can make all your basic adjustments that you need to exposure contrast colors you can do color splashes so most of what i think you need is in there if you're just starting out on photo editing i wouldn't say it's a professional grade uh, kind of piece of software, would you? No, but sometimes if you just want to, you know, tidy up an image, add a bit of contrast, add a bit of saturation, yeah. straighten the horizon, you don't need to go crazy on every single image and every single photography outing. So yeah. I think it's, it definitely has its place. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I think, you know, it's free. You can't get any fairer than that. <laughs> exactly. I think it's a good option. <laughs> Why not? It's free. It's free. So use it as much as you wish. Um, so the next one we'll move on to is Capture One. Now, this one and the next one, I've personally not had that much experience with, um, but we've included them because they are gaining in popularity. I see a lot of pro photographers talking about them uh, and they're kind of, they're therefore, you know, they're, they're, they're starting to kind of get a little bit more popular in the market. But Capture One is a raw image editor and it's made by a company called Phase One and they actually used to make cameras. They're one of the earliest types of digital cameras that I used when starting out in, in studio photography back in 2005, 2006. Um, and they're still around. I, I, I don't know, have you ever used a phase one camera before, Em? I've not, but I have heard of them and um, I've heard of the software as well. I, I yeah. think it's um, one of the things I've, I've heard that makes this very, very good is, is how it uh, how you can catalog your images and how you can organize them yes yeah yeah that's one of the big things is that it you kind of and again i imagine lightroom has uh similar features as well that you can kind of like add unique tags so if you wanted to tag a load of photographs that were portraits you could do so like you were saying before when uh tutor Rachel would type into Lightroom about lions and sunsets you get all the relative images up there and this is just the exact same thing and you know it can handle quite a large amount of raw files um, you know it, it's designed to be quite a powerful piece of software that it can process things quite quickly but again like we talked about when you've got this software on your computer it's only ever going to be as fast as, as the device it's running on isn't it so it's great to sound like it can handle lots but if your computer can't, then it's it's only going to be a relative. If you've got a wonderful high spec iMac or Alienware laptop or something like that, then I'm sure it'd be brilliant. But you've got to have the good device to go with a good software, don't you? Yeah, you need a a, a decent processor and a, a good chunk of RAM. Um, and bonus points if you have a graphics card. Uh, things particularly like Photoshop eat up your graphics card processing. So. You do, you do need a mid to top range if you want to take editing seriously, unless it's like a web-based version for sure. Yeah, and I, I think in terms of payments as well, because we've been talking about what's free and what's not, um, I believe with Capture One, there is an, is an option to pay, like a one-time flat fee. Um, and you can have a monthly plan, but it's a lot more expensive even than like Photoshop's, or sorry, Adobe's kind of creative cloud plan. So um, financially speaking, it may not, kind of be as beneficial but i believe from what i've seen it's very it reaches or appeals more to the high-end market in terms of photographers so not to say that you can't use it if you're a beginner but partly because of pricing etc you may find there's more benefit to yourself as a pro photographer and like it's an investment for you more than anything else so i wouldn't say it's the place to begin with if you're a beginner in that sense um, so our next piece of software is Affinity, Affinity Photo, I should say more specifically, because I think they've got a, a few different pieces of software within the Affinity uh, ecosphere, really. But you know Affinity quite well, don't you? Yeah, I use it quite a lot on iPad, uh, less so on desktop, but I've heard good things about the desktop app. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding of it is if Luminar is um, like a third party version of Lightroom, then Affinity Photo is is like Photoshop, except you just pay for it once and off you go. Um, in terms of the iPad app, I actually think the Affinity app is better than the Photoshop app. I feel like it's more designed for the iPad UI. I feel like they've had a couple more years of, of getting it onto that platform, whereas the Photoshop app is quite new. Yeah. Uh, I'm very, very impressed with it. What do you think about Affinity? I've been trying to teach it my uh, self-taught, teach myself affinity, however you want to say it. Um, 
because there is, I think, again, a growing number of people that are using it. Again, like Luminar in comparison to Lightroom, that one-off payment seems to be so uh, appealing. And it's not expensive either. I think it was maybe about 30, 40 pounds. So it's maybe like, what, $50. Um, when you're paying for something forever, that's absolutely nothing when you're going to be using it as often as photographers do. Um, I'll fully agree. When I opened it up, I was like, my God, this is a ripoff um, in a good way of, of Photoshop. Inspiration. Everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Let's use the word inspiration, not a copycat or a ripoff. I'm sure lawyers would be all over this. Um, but yeah, very much heavily inspired by Photoshop because they've obviously seen gaps in the market where things could be made easier. Um, and I, everything I kind of expected to find as a Photoshop user, um, I pretty much found in the same place and worked in a similar way. Um, so if you're ever migrating from Photoshop, if you want to go and do something else and, and not have that subscription, yeah, I would straight away say Affinity is the first one to, to look at. Um, so I sat down again, like Pixlr and like Photoshop, I kind of created a... Um, uh, basically a whole course really about talking about the features and the, the aspects of workspace and the menus and all that of affinity for someone that's never used it before, which would be a great precursor to other tutorials that I know you'll do for desktop and the, um, the app of affinity as well. Cause it's great. It's really, really powerful. It's really quick. It's quite clean. There's, there's nothing, there's obviously a few benefits that I think Photoshop has got, but I think one thing affinity cuts down on is that because there's so many options within like nearly every menu of Photoshop that I've never used before. And I never know what they're used for or however anyone would use. I think Affinity's looked at them and went, no, that's rubbish. That's pointless. No one uses that really, you know, and, and basically just cut down to the stuff that is actually important for a photographer. Um, because I think it sounds really stupid, but the name Affinity Photo really points out that this is designed for photographers. Whereas I think we established before Photoshop wasn't written or designed for photographers. It's for a lot of different things. Um, so you can kind of take a bit of solace that the tools that are in there are going to be useful one way or another for a photographer. Very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with Affinity. I think the app on iPad, I think, was 19.99. And wow. you're literally getting a, a full, more or less a full working version of Photoshop on yeah. mobile. So and that, and, and that would normally cost you, like that would be like two months worth of having Photoshop, wouldn't it, on, on like your desktop. So, yeah, so for price-wise, I don't think there's much that's going to beat Affinity if you're going to compare the, the two between Photoshop and um, because it has tons of features. It's got a, a raw file editor. You can do HDR merging, panoramic stitching, digital painting. You've got layer masks. You've got batch processing, color corrections, everything you're pretty much going to need, really. Um, I don't think there's many tools that are being missed out um, from kind of uh, Photoshop that's in Affinity, really. It's just kind of ultimate preference. But I think we're because we're trying to kind of reach out to people that haven't used these apps before or haven't used photo editing apps previously and just to know what's out there. But I think that pretty much surmises most of uh, the main kind of popular pieces of software, doesn't it really as well? I don't know if there's any apps or anything like that you would otherwise um, kind of want to kind of highlight them. Um. Um, there's a few more complex apps like um, LR Time Lapse, which I use to create time lapses in Lightroom. I use a Starry Sky Stacker for my astrophotography. But in terms of, of basic get in there, fix your photographs and, 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 you know, get really stuck in with your photo editing. I think you should consider uh, Lightroom if, if you can stomach the subscription and if not really consider um, Luminar. If you want to just try something and, and get your feet wet and, and just see how you get on, uh, Pixlr. Mm -hmm. Blooming brilliant. Is there anything else that you use or are you um... mostly Adobe? Yeah, well, that's it primarily through a lot of the my work that I do here. Um, yeah, I will kind of rely upon Adobe. Um, but with that said, kind of offline, uh, I find Snapseed is a fantastic app. I know a lot of people do kind of quite like that. Um, I've used Prisma before. Now, that's not so much, strictly speaking, a direct photo editor like a lot of the ones we've talked about are. That's more about kind of special effects and, and you know, a lot of kind of quirky tools and kind of creative little, you know, distortions for images, which can be quite fun if you just, if you're getting a little bit bored and you're a bit jaded with your photography and you want to mix things up, that's one worth checking out. And I think we actually did 
a, a YouTube video about it. Um, if you have a look on the iPhotography channel, we did um, a, like a little video about three editing apps that we had a look at. And I think Pixel was one of them, which was quite cool. Um, I know I've forgotten the other two, but it'll come to me at some point. But yeah, I, I would I would say kind of Snapseed is one that kind of I, I quite like and Prism is another big kind of favorite as well. But otherwise, I tend to do most of it through like Lightroom uh, on my tablet. I, I think that's like one of the biggest things that I've been using between that and Photoshop. Those are my kind of go-to kind of editing softwares. But if you could only choose one, uh, Emily, if you can only have one editing app or piece of software forever and ever and ever, what would you have? It'd have to be Lightroom. It, uh, I just think for the color grading and, and just how I style my own images, it's got mm. more or less everything that you need. Yeah. Would I would in this fictional world would I be allowed to use it on iPad as well? Yes, I suppose because it's the same kind of. Yes, definitely that. Then I was going to say before. Um, Another thing having it on mobile is when I have weddings, I often put one photo on social media um, mm. on the day because that's when you get all the everyone. That's when you get the most hype, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm not. I'm not logging my laptop to a wedding, so I literally use my card reader, for, uh, edit a, a nice photograph on my phone, and then stick it on Facebook and Instagram uh, on the day. So that's a brilliant thing. It's. it's um, if, if you do have other devices like phones and tablets that you want to integrate into your photography, yeah. particularly if you're traveling, etc., I do like the ecosystem of Adobe. If yeah. you're exclusively desktop, then you've got way more options and more cheaper options. But if you want your interconnectivity, you do you are kind of stuck with Adobe. <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I, th I can see it as a benefit. And I can also see um, if you're going to photography workshops, if you've been taking pictures throughout the day, and then you're going to sit down and edit them with the rest of the people that go along. Yeah, you, you don't want to necessarily have a big old laptop and then wires and everything like that and your mouse and whatnot. You just literally have it all on a tablet plug it in and you can do your edits just as efficiently as anybody else. So I can see there's certainly big benefits for it, but, um, but it'd be lovely to know that if you've been listening to this podcast, what your thoughts upon um, any of the software that we've been talking about, plus if there's any other softwares we've not really talked about that much or any of the apps that you want to kind of, um, tell us about then get in touch you can find us all on social media uh, as per normal and our email address is tutor at iPhotographyCourse.com. and as i said if you want to get a, a little bit more into photoshop lightroom luminar pixlr um, or even affinity um, we we'll have some sort of training course or videos for it then you go over to learn.iphotography.com forward slash podcast and we've got offers on all our available courses there um fronted by emily in many instances as well so if you've enjoyed listening to em you can hear some more of it and watch some more of it she trains you through Lightroom and Luminar 4 um, but thank you again it's been absolutely lovely having you on Emily I hope you've enjoyed uh, this wonderful little podcast episode and if you've enjoyed listening please subscribe and follow it really really helps us out and it's lovely to hear from you as well so get in touch and we will do more of this won't we Emily absolutely thank you so much for having me on and you know me photo photo editing I would do this all day every day so I'm very happy <laughs> to talk about it and I love seeing other people's edits as well yeah I, I think it's a it's as an integral part of photography as your composition and everything else I think it's the second half that is often overlooked with yeah. certain uh, beginner photographers so it's good fun to get stuck in definitely yeah there's always a good kind of argument to have with purists that that photo editing destroys photography. And, and as much as we won't get into that kind of conversation. That's I, a I, whole I, other barrel of words. It is. That, that's <laughs> another podcast I think would go on for hours. We need to bring somebody on that is is an ultra purist in a way and would, would you know, only upload kind of uh, raw original files. So we'll have to uh, dig hard and see if someone like that exists and is willing to come on and <laughs> be challenged. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> bring your helmets and your spears <laughs> yeah brilliant well thank you so much for listening anyway and we'll catch you on another episode bye-bye for now bye